initiative is the Knowledge Transfer and Innovation Fund, which is Scottish Rural Development funding, which comes from the European Union and the Scottish Government. And this is an innovation project, so it's looking at new innovative practices in agriculture and supporting them. The project is a collaboration, so Alex Brewster here at Rockmail Farm, this is the host farm, and we also have in the collaborative group there is SOPA, the Scottish Organic Producers Association, the science team who include Abertay University, uh, Dundee University, and then we have the James Hutton Institute, and finally we have Ulich Research Centre which is based in Germany. The project is looking to demonstrate the use of crushed silicate rock to sequester carbon at the farm scale. How can rocks sequester carbon? Well, this is the project is looking to use um, what we would call uh, rock finds. You may have heard of it referred to as quarry stour, but it's basically just fine. Uh, rock that's effectively a byproduct of the quarrying industry. Okay, so there are two types of carbon that we'll find in our soils. There's organic carbon, and this is carbon that has come from living organisms, so it's biological in origin. And then we also have inorganic carbon. Now, this has come from the weathering of rocks, and it's basically mineral in origin. And it's really the inorganic carbon that we're looking to sequester in this project. Inorganic carbon being formed by this geological process is, is a slower process in the formation of organic carbon. Um, but we can speed this up by applying this, this finer product. It looks like a really exciting way to be able to sequester more carbon into our soils and hopefully in a more stable form as well. There's a bit of terminology involved here because this is a, a, about the geology. So this is basic silicate rocks. Okay, these are volcanic rocks. They're basic, which means that they are alkaline, and silicate because they contain probably about, roughly about 50% as silicate. Now, within that rock, the next most important elements are calcium and magnesium. And it's these parts that are important for the carbon sequestration. Carbon dioxide is present in our soils as well as in the air and when it mixes with water it forms a very weak acid, carbonic acid. And it's this weak acid that then basically some chemistry happens and the silicate and the calcium and the magnesium are split apart and then eventually this carbonic acid, so it's taken carbon from the atmosphere and it joins with either the calcium or the magnesium to form a carbonate. So calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate may be reasonably familiar to farmers already as it's what we use for agricultural lime. But the key difference with agricultural lime and this product is that actually that whole process of coming from the silicates into the carbonate probably happened a few million years ago. So it's that initial geological process of the weak acid, which contains carbon, mixes with the rock, the silicate rock which doesn't have any carbon and it forms calcium or magnesium carbonate within the soil and that's a reasonably stable form of carbon that's held within there. The science team will be looking at a range of different factors um, which will include things like the carbon dioxide exchange between the soil and the air so it should give us an indication of carbon sequestration We'll also look at soil uh, microbiology and soil nutrient status. And then we'll also look at the plants above ground as well. Just, you know, do we get more biomass or is there a change in nutrient content of the plants? We also have a group of about 12 pilot farmers who are located across Scotland and they've also been given a little bit of the product to try and their role it really is to consider the use of the product and how they could be using it on their own farm at, at the larger scale. And the final part of the project is looking to develop a pretty simple to use app 
that farmers can perhaps use to be able to give an indication of the amount of carbon they may be able to sequester into their own soils. The project is due to run until March 2021 when KITIV funding finishes. So I suppose we're standing here today up at Rotten Mile with Alex M from Dundee University. We're all socially distanced and Carla from Aberdeen University and we've instigated this project Rock on Soils. And what we've done historically here is we've spread dollarite over the land at variable rates in between 5 tonne a hectare, 10 tonne a hectare and then further across is 20 tonne a hectare. And the theory is that there is that dollarite, when you apply in a crushed rock form, it has a very high rating of minerals and trace elements to it, but it also helps in stabilising and sequestering carbon into the soil. And it had been talked about within the family for quite a while, and the market gardening and gardening, this was, was a really great product for enhancing, enhancing vegetable production. And OK, let's just give it a wing in a farm situation and, and see what this did. And we had other challenges happening on farm actually. We were getting challenged by selenium and cobalt issues in, in sheep, especially in lambs. And there's a bit of selenium and cobalt in the dollar right. And I thought, well, can we, if we apply it at first hand onto the land, is that better than trying to bolus the animal? And then Carla came into our lives. I was using this rock dollar right in my PhD for engineering purposes. So what we do is we trap CO2 and we precipitate it as a mineral, but to make the soil stronger. Because agriculture has all these environmental issues that are associated with the practice. We just thought that this could be a good project to look at the soil and look at whether inorganic carbon is accumulating or not as a result of the application of uh, dollarite which is it's a really great story. But it's also breaking down barriers, I think, and stereotypes between the science and the scientists and the farmers and the practice. And can we take the knowledge that the scientists have through their work and a lot of the theory that goes with that, and can we put that into farming practice and help us bridge this communication gap? And that's, from my point of view, as the farmer, has been just fascinating. So what, what is this, Carl? What, what's this? in a white chamber, what's it called, what does it do, and what does the yellow box do? It measures variations in CO2 concentration in a closed uh, system. So it measures, so when you put it on top of the soil and it closes, there is atmospheric CO2 no, in the air that can either just remain there or it can be trapped. Can, can move down or down, downwards and into the soil. We call this carbon sequestration. Now the soil has organic matter, which, organic car which contains organic carbon, inorganic carbon, there are, and then there is the, the microbes, and then there are the roots, and, and you've got this, this system which can so release CO2 into the atmosphere. It can also trap it, or, or this is what this piece of equipment can do. Just measure how much of this soil carbon is coming out of the soil, or going into the soil from the atmosphere. And then from this small sampling area, we can extrapolate and make assumptions on what's happening in larger areas. So, uh, so Carla has been hard at work uh, monitoring uh, the vegetation, doing the soil sampling and the ve uh, vegetation sampling. Um, so we were just interested to see if we can observe any difference in the productivity of the grass, both above ground and the, the root production with the um, addition of the rock. Carla takes a photo, we look at the, we're interested in the abundance of different species of grass, uh, then she does uh, an, an, exclusive, an exhaustive sweep and, and cuts all of the, um, all the grass so that we can dry it and, and weigh it. Um, and then we're going to apportion out what, you know, what proportion of that uh, productive biomass was uh, which species. And then we're also looking at the, uh, Carla's also sampled the roots. So we want to get a sense of how much carbon is being stored in the roots versus uh, being produced above ground. And we're going to, again, compare that between uh, the areas that have been treated with this rock and those that have not. 
Um, but this is a very short time period that we're measuring over. It's just a few months, and so realistically, you know, the productivity of, of a grassland or of a farm is going to vary a lot with the season. Um, so we're really just kind of looking at a snapshot. But I'm generally really excited of what comes out of this because even if the results are not what we hope them to be, we will have learnt a massive amount. The challenges that are facing food production, and as in, as in a nutritional sense, farming practices, how do we go about it, and in carbon sequestration, we are going to learn something which changes the direction of travel. Certainly, I mean, I think all, all sectors, you know, in the economy are, are thinking about being carbon neutral or, or as much as possible reducing emissions. And it would be very exciting if you know, this, this weathering this rock could be uh, mixed in across uh, the, the farmlands of, of, uh, of Britain and just sort of quietly in the background sequestering carbon while we're also dealing with many other ways of, of reducing emissions. So yeah, it's very exciting. If the project shows that this is a really effective way to be able to sequester carbon and also potentially brings other agricultural benefits, then you know, there's potential this could be a bit of a game changer for agricultural production here and it would be great to see it rolled out um, to the wider agricultural industry as, as we move forward in, in everyone taking their role in tackling climate change.